Price 17 TV. Back at it with another one player. You already know. Growing up as a kid. Having no dad. No father figure. No man in my life. Not even an uncle or two. You know. To throw the ball around. Was pretty hard on me. But I will say this thing. My mom. She played both. She played mom and dad. You know, so I got to give her her flowers now. Why does she's here still? You know what I'm saying? Mama, I love you. Look, I didn't come out that bad. You feel me? But I will say this. Growing up with no dad was tough because I got teased a lot. Because they always say, what's your dad do for work? I say, I don't even know the guy. I don't even know. How I got here without a dad. Because from what I know, I don't know where the motherfuckers at. So, you know, growing up in the TL. And, you know, during that time, everybody was on drugs. You know what I'm saying? So, as a kid, I seen a lot of stuff that kids don't see. You know, I see people OD. I've seen dead bodies. I've seen motherfuckers laying on the ground with needles in they arm, I see motherfuckers tie up yo with the belt and trying to find the vein to shoot. And this is as a kid, you know. And growing up fast, I knew more shit at the age of fucking nine than most kids knew at the age of 16, 17. And that's a fact. I've seen my mom save lives. I've seen motherfuckers lose lives. A friend of mine, when I was a kid, who had a dad and I cannot remember his name for shit, and that's that's fucked up, because I remember a lot of shit, but I, I can't remember his name, but he was an Asian kid, and he lived a few blocks up in the, the, the TL, I think he lived on Gary Street, I'm not sure, but he lived close, so we used to play at the park, and he had his mom and dad, and they would always speak to my mom, and me and him would play, and he had a little younger kid, but... He really wasn't old enough to play with us because we were, what were we, uh, seven, I think? Yeah. So, his dad was mad cool. Used to be throwing the ball at us. But there was one day I seen a kid at the park. And he and his mom was talking to my mom and she was just crying and my mom was hugging her. And I didn't know why that my mom was hugging her. And the little boy was like, he he had his head down, and I'm like, what's going on here? So, come to find out, somebody stabbed his dad 57 times. You know what's the craziest part, though? This man lived. I mean, they stabbed him in his back, his arms, his head, everything. Down there in the Civic Center in San Francisco. So, and then after... A few months, I seen this boy's dad, and he could barely walk, he could barely talk, it was just, that was the first time I've seen something like that, where somebody was one way, one minute, and then later on down the road, there was a whole different way, like a cripple. It was tough to see, but growing up in the TL, I seen a lot of shit like that, I seen a lot of shit like that, and then the... The craziest part is they said the person who did it lived in my in my building. So they kind of know who did it. But back then, you didn't, you know what I'm saying? You just had to handle it the way that you hand. And he was too fucked up to even get any re revenge or get back because he could barely walk. He was like walking real crazy, crippled. He couldn't barely talk. His mouth was like this. It was just real sad. So, growing up, that was like the only friend I knew that had a dad when I was a kid like that. And then, I, then to see what, what happened to him, that was a, a damn shame. So, this is, the, this is the hardest part, though. When it's you growing up and you don't know where you come from and who you came from, you know... You know, you, you know your mom, but my mom didn't even have pictures to be like, this is your dad. She told me stories that, that, that was shitty. Like, she told me that we walked 
passed him one time and he was with another broad and he didn't even acknowledge me as his kid because he was with some other broad. So after that, when I was a little, little kid, like about three or four, my mom shook the spot. She moved out of the 209, moved to San Francisco. I moved there. And at that age, I didn't remember him at no two years old. So I never could picture his face in my head. So later on down the line, which was a long time ago, you know what I'm saying? My grandma was alive and I always used to ask my grandma because she knew my dad and I was like grandma who's my dad and she was like some guy and and my mom or her would never really tell me who the fuck this guy was and the funny thing is they both said the same thing you don't want to know him he's no good but in the back of my head I want to know where I came from who's my fucking daddy And then, you know, we moved to New York, so I never met him. And then I had stepfather after stepfather after stepfather, and this shit was trash. They treated me like shit, so I never... And out of all these guys, not one motherfucker will come outside and throw the motherfucking ball with me, and I love sports. I taught myself how to play sports. I take the football and throw that shit in the air myself and play catch with myself. Until I found friends to throw the ball... A round with, and then we find enough kids to play a damn game. But I'm going to tell you this. Most of my friends growing up didn't have no dad. They, they knew him, but they didn't live with them. A lot of my friends' parents were single mothers taking care of us kids in the ghetto. And that's just how it was. A lot of these guys didn't, didn't want to be in their kid's life. And me... When I had my son, I told myself, first of all, I told myself, I'm going to have a son. My my mom said when I was nine or eight, I said, I'm going to have a son and I'm going to name him the same as me. He's going to be the same name as me. And guess what? When I was 20 years old, I had a son and I named him after me, Junior. So I called that one as a kid and I followed through with the and one, with, with the finger roll. You feel me? So... Growing up, I never wanted to make a child and make him or her feel the way I felt by not having no dad. So I I, I told myself, shit, I'll be there. My son's mother came all the way to New York, got pregnant, and was coming back to California. And I, I left. I left my mom. I left everything, and I followed her all the way back to California you do want to know why? Because I wasn't going to repeat the cycle. There wasn't going to be no, you did what you did. Nah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be a man and I'm going to take care of my kid. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand on my own damn two feet, put my chest out, and do what I got to do to be a, a motherfucking dad. And that's facts. So, I get back to California and my son is probably like, ah, let me see. Maybe two years old. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. I want to say it's probably 2000. So I'm at my grandma's house and she's in the, um, she's in the old folks house, but you know, she has her own like room and, and stuff. So I go and see my grandma a lot. Sometimes I would, I would stay over there and spend the night just to talk with my grandma, pick her brain about the past, and finally, she told me that my dad lived in Tracy this whole time, because I kept trying to, I just wanted to see his face, I wanted to match his face with my face, my mom's and his, and and just see how I came about to be who I am, even without him, I just wanted to see where I came from, so my grandma gave me his name, and and the craziest part is, back then, I don't know if you kids know about shit like this now, but there was this shit called a phone book, where you can open up the phone book, and it would have numbers to everybody, stores, businesses, residential, all that. And I looked up his name, and I, 
there was a few names, but where did, where, where my grandma said they lived, it matched. Like the little, like the area. So I called this number up, right? And there was none, and there was no answer. I waited 20 minutes. I called this number back. And somebody picked up the phone. And I said, can I speak to Jerry? That was my dad's name. Okay. And the guy said, this is Jerry. Who's calling? I got quiet as hell. I got quiet as hell. Hold on, because I'm at the smoke, smoke now, because th this is ill here. He said, who's calling? I said, this is your son. And you know what this motherfucker said? Aaron? I'm like, no, my name ain't Aaron. But the first thought I told myself is, oh, my God, he's... He's done this to two of us. He ain't been in two of our fucking lives, this fucking guy. So, I say, no, this is, this is so-and-so. And I told him, and he got quiet. And I said, you know what? I've always wanted to meet you and see how that you look. You know, because from what I've been told by my family that, you know, you didn't want no part of me. So, I just want to come see you and talk to you. So what he did is he told me, sure, come over in a few hours because he was going to go somewhere and he was going to come back. So I called back in a few hours and he picked up the phone again. And then I told him I'd be on my way. And I walked there. I was, I was nervous, excited, mad. I had all these feelings just running through my body, all these thoughts going through my mind of me a kid and and just all the struggle that my mom had to go with with no help from from no man. And I just felt like you owe me so much, man. But I didn't want to be going there on that tip. But that's how I thought. I said, man, you you owe me a lot, man. You don't know how hard my life was because I didn't have somebody to look up to. A dad to throw the ball around. Somebody to help me with my homework. Just anything. Just being a dad. Buy me a fucking dog. Something. Just anything, man. Buy me a Christmas present. A toy. Anything. Take me swimming. Take me fishing. Just some father and son time. Anything. I had none of that shit growing up. The streets raised me. Which is sad. You know what I'm saying? My friends... Had no friends. Like friends outside our neighborhood. So we just stuck with us. We didn't go outside our shit. So our friends were just friends from here. We didn't go to other kids' houses that we knew at school. We just hung out with the friends that we knew from the neighborhood. And that's how that we played. We didn't have dads to take us to Little League basketball. No practices. Football, nothing. We played in the street. So... When I went over there, I finally got there. And when I'm walking up to the front door, because I'm looking from the addresses, I'm going, and I'm looking, I'm like, damn, I'm getting closer. So my heart start racing. I'm getting nervous as shit, because, you know, I don't know what the fuck to expect. Is he going to be happy to see me? Is he going to deny me? Are we going to get into a tussle? I had no idea what the fuck to expect, so I just... Took a deep breath and knocked on that fucking door. And when he opened that door, he looked at me. I damn near cried. I had tears coming down my eyes because I was like, 20 years it takes me to see what my dad face looks like. And that's a motherfucking shame. We didn't get no child support. We didn't get nothing from him the whole time. So part of me wants to hug this guy to death. Part of me wants to knock his motherfucking jaw through his, the back of his fucking head. But I came inside. I shook his hand. I said, it's nice to meet you. I was the bigger man. Because all my life, I wanted to kick his ass. I'm not going to lie because I, I, 
I just felt the way that you did me was dirty. Dirty as hell. So we sit there, we talk, and um, he's telling me all this stuff of how my mom and my grandma, they hid me and this and that. But the fact is that my grandma had the same phone number for like 50 years. 835-3958. She lived in the same place for like 50 years. So there was no way you can go over there and drop off some gifts or send me a Christmas card or a birthday card or just sneak up and pop up and see me. That to me, I knew you didn't give a fuck. You have more important things going on in your life than to be a fucking dad. He was a drinker. He was on drugs, a drug addict, the whole shit. I don't want to, you know what I mean, slander him or do shit like that. But, yo, the truth is the truth. You know what I'm saying? You chose other shit in your life than to be a father to me. And I came out fine. Thank you, mama. Salute. Give you your flowers now. Believe that. But, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, go back and talk about some shit like that. So, after I met him... He has brothers, so I got uncles that I never knew I had. So, one uncle was, my mom always said that, well, after I told her, I met him, she was shocked, and then she starts telling me why did she didn't want me to to meet him, and the shit that why, and this and that, and you know, she just ran it down, and you know, between her and my grandma, I understood why they kept me away because he wasn't trying to find me at all. He, he didn't give a shit. And even my aunties, that was his sisters, even told me, I wouldn't even bring your son around him to even meet him. Don't even open up that door. And you know what? He wanted to, he wanted to see my son. He wanted to see his grandson. But you know what I did? I told him no. Because guess what? I wanted to see you. And it took me 20 years and a, a long conversation with my 90-something-year-old grandma and to look in the phone book and look you up to find you. So, no, you don't get that. You don't get the joy of meeting my favorite person in the whole world, which is my little man. You don't get that. You could have, but I'm not going to... Do that to my son, and I'm not going to give you that right. You don't deserve that right. I know that sounds fucked up, but that's some real shit. You don't deserve it. You ain't earned no points. So his brother, Uncle Eddie, which I will say, which is gone now, and um, I liked him. So my mom said he was the coolest one out the whole family, and I liked him. He was real cool. He was like, hey, you smoke weed? And his nephew this, you want a beer? I, man, he treated me good. I, I like that guy. And, you know, it was cold. It was cold. It was definitely cold. Because I liked him more than I liked my dad. Because he was more trying to, oh, man, I've been wanting to see you for, like, you know, like, he was more excited to see me than my own dad. Is That's how I felt like that's how I was seeing it. Like it was two different dudes and it was like, he was just more like, I get shocked to see me. And you know, because after about 30 minutes, I started saying, man, you missed my childhood. I needed you. And I broke down and cried. I cried. It was like, my life could have been better. You don't know what I've been through in my life, how tough my life was. But listen, I made it, and I'm stronger today. And listen, I don't hold nothing against you. I ain't got no no grudges. I'm just glad to finally get to look you in your eye and see what you missed out on because I'm a great young man. And I was like 20, 20. And he couldn't say anything. He told me, he told me sorry, this and that. But, you know, sorry ain't going to fix that, man. So... Let me fire this up, because this shit is crazy. So, 
So, down the line, he ended up getting sick. And this was probably maybe about, okay, my grandma passed first. My grandma passed. And then he passed the very next year. So, he's in the hospital. And my cousin calls me up. He's like, man, no, no, my female cousin, she called me like, your dad's not doing good. He's really sick. He's in the hospital. They say he don't have that much time. So what I did, I walked all the way to the hospital. And I sat in that room with him for like two hours. And I talked. And I told him, I forgive you, man. I forgive you. I want you on your deathbed to think that. You know, that I hate you. Listen, I hated you my whole life, but you know, I found you, I see what it is, I can't change the past, and I'm not that kind of asshole fucking kid, so I told him, I gave him a hug, I kissed him right here, on his forehead, I said, Pops, I love you, I forgive you, and I walked out of that hospital knowing that might be the last time I ever seen that guy in my life. Even though I didn't see him too much. But when I did see him, you know, I tried to be cool. Drink a beer with him. Talk a little shit. You know, he always asked me how my mom is doing. And she didn't want no part of that guy because he fucked her over bad. So, so my female cousin calls me, I want to say... Was it two days after I went to see him? And when I went to see him, he, he was saying he was having trouble using the bathroom. Nothing was coming out. And I just seen he had lost weight. And I just knew it was just a matter of time before that he's no longer here. And what I will say is my female cousin called me and said... um that they're keeping them alive so the family can come and say their goodbyes. And she wanted me to come. And I told them, no, I'm not going. I went to see him. We talked. We had a good talk. I gave him a hug. I kissed him right here on his forehead. And I said, I love you and I forgive you. And those were the last moments of his life that I wanted him to hear from me and for me to see him. I didn't want to go see him where I can't talk to him no more. What's the point? I knew he was dying. I knew that day was coming. But guess what? I didn't want to be in there while he's hooked up. He can't talk to me. See nothing. So I left it how it was. A hug. A kiss. And I forgive you. And you know what? At the funeral, it was the craziest thing. At the funeral, there's a picture of me and him that I've never seen until that fucking funeral. I was like, probably like two, two. So that's why I don't remember this shit. But he had me on his motorcycle and I'm not going to lie. He looked like he was happy. And I never, you know, and then my mom said, yeah, one and two, he was a real good dad. But after like three or four, he started going his different way and doing drugs and fucking with a broad and not even claiming me and just all kind of shit. And he did it to this other kid, Aaron, who never showed up to to his funeral. So I got a brother somewhere out here that I don't even know this guy. You know what I'm saying? He never showed up. Nobody has no contact, info, nothing. So somewhere there's another motherfucker who came from the same dude as me and we don't even know each other exists. I know he exists, but he probably don't know a about me. So at the funeral, I don't know why, but I had no emotion. I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. But when I seen that picture, I automatically started bawling. I said, this motherfucker actually had one time where he was really a fucking dad. And he had me on the bike. And it was just, it was crazy because I... I never felt no feelings for him until I seen the fucking picture. And I broke down like a little baby and started bawling. Where my cousin 
he grabbed me. He's like, hey, cuz, man, it's going to be good. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, that's why be a father to your child so your child doesn't have to grow up like I grew up hard, regrets, who's my dad. You know how hard it is when you go to school and when they talking about what does your dad do and there's kids is like, my dad's this. Even if they dad don't live with them, they know who the fuck their daddy was. I didn't know who the fuck my daddy was. That shit was hard. I mean, it was the hardest thing as a young kid growing up when I loved sports and I didn't have nobody to play sports with. Take me to no Little League. When I went to Little League, my friend's dad paid for it because I was better than his son and I always hang out with his son. <clears throat> he paid for it, took me to my practices, and we fucking played for one year and we won the motherfucking championship. I will tell that story on a whole different tip, but that's how bad the shit was because I always looked at my friend Lucas's dad like, man, you're so lucky, man. Your dad is so cool. He plays catch show with you, all kind of shit. I didn't have that shit, man. That shit was fucked up growing up like that. But guess what, though? I'm alive. I'm a great dad to my son. And thank you for showing me what not to do in life. And you never abandon your kids. That's your foundation. That's your legacy. You can't just not fuck with your kids unless that you're just a piece of shit dad and a piece of shit person. Because any motherfucker who don't take care of his kids, I don't want you having my back. Because if you ain't got your own kids back, you can never have my back. And that's true shit. So, I just want to drop a few jewels about being raised by a mother who was a mother and a father. And she did a hell of a job by herself, struggling as a single mother in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. We was shelter to shelter to shelter to shelter with my brother's dad, who was another piece of shit dude, who after a, after a while he left and never tried to find my brother. So we just grew up with fucked up dads who was never around. At least my brother got to meet his dad, so probably he was about, I want to say, five, and then that motherfucker took off gone, so it's very important, young men, who's watching my channel, that when you have a kid, you take care of your child, man, you be a father, you, you do the hardest and the best job you can to raise a good young man or a good young lady, this is Christ 17, man, I'm just going in the time machine, but I don't got the throwback on. I just was, you know, spitting some facts. You know what I'm saying? Growing up is tough. But mama, I got to give you your flowers now because you raised a hell of a man and I'm raising a hell of a young man now. So be a father to your child. Don't abandon your kids because, man, you can end up like me. And have to look up in the phone book and try to find this guy. And hey, you find him. You might not be as nice as me. You might want to kill the motherfucker. You might have had a worse life than me. And blame him for everything and find him and go smoke his ass. But you know, you got to live and learn. And you can't hold grudges that you have no control over in life. So now that I'm older... And I got a son and he's older. One day, he's going to have a kid, a son. Hopefully, I want a grandson. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I want to play catch. So, I just want him to always be a dad to his child. Like, I'll be a dad to him. Because, man, any day, something could happen to any person in your life. And you got to just live your life to the fullest. Love and laugh is good. But treat every day like it can be your last day here. And don't leave with no regrets. Because I know when I kissed him that last time on his forehead and hugged him and told him I forgave him, he knew I really truly forgave him. And he knew 
That was going to be the last time he ever looked in my eyes. R.I.P. Pops. No grudges. Just had to tell an old school throwback shit. So, this is Christ 17. Hitting you with some shit from the heart. This shit goes deep. And yo, like and subscribe. Share my videos. Man, because I'm on the come up play and I got more throwback stories for your ass. Life was hard, but it had to be hard to make a strong young man which turn it into a great older man like myself. Christ 17, catch you on the flip side. Like and subscribe. Eat your heart out pimping. There's more stories to come. So share my content, please. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day.